Hey everyone, this is Andrew in Omaha, and I wanted to share uh, my latest build, which is going to be a fire shield for a uh, firefighter's helmet. I've made these before. Um, this one's a little different just because of the materials I used, but uh, it's for a friend of mine. He just got promoted to fire captain, so he needs his shield to change from black to white to show that he's a supervisor. And uh, I decided to try and use Tandy's white leather. Now, this leather I got from the Tandy Leather Factory. I've showed this hide before. It's a couple years ago. I've had it for a while. Uh, the item number is 9841-78 and I went and I looked on their website and I cannot find it and I also cannot find the uh, inch and a half straps that are made out of the same leather so I don't know if they offer it anymore if you call them I know white leather is extremely difficult to locate the only other company I know that even provides white leather is Weaver Leather and I think those hides are almost $300 for an entire side of uh, either comes in white or red but uh, if any of you are, are familiar with leather craft at all you'll know that uh, white is one of the most difficult colors to dye I don't even know I've tried some Phoebe's white dye it did not work well at all I didn't like it um, I saw this hide pop up on Tandy's website a couple years ago, I actually think it was on one of their holiday uh, specials, and I bought it right away because I knew that uh, white leather is really hard to come by. And I bought it specifically to make one of these uh, fire shields in all white. It just so happens I haven't had an opportunity to make one till now. Um, one of the things that I found with this white leather is uh, anything it touches, it just absorbs. It uh, stains very easily. Um, it's very difficult to work with as opposed to your regular uh, vegetable tan leathers. As far as the body of, the, of this shield goes, um, for the white part, uh, if I was going to do this again, I'd probably just go ahead and make it out of regular vegetable tan and just paint it with Angelus uh, white leather acrylic um, leather paint. I've made shield uh, a different white shield for another person a couple years ago and all I did was painted it with the uh, the Phoebe's acrylic uh, leather paint. He put it on his shield and he wore it into a fire and absolutely barbecued the front of his helmet. Um, and I can uh, insert a picture to show you what that looks like but uh, he took it back cleaned it off yeah it it's uh, charred black now and the acrylic uh, Angelus leather paint uh, did really well in the high heat it didn't uh, bubble off boil melt off or anything like that so um, I think from now on when I make these shields if I need to make a white one I'm just gonna paint it from now on um, I've made this panel removable, put some Velcro behind it so you can remove it and that way if he gets put on another shift, he already told me he's going to need a different number because then when the next shift bid comes around, since he's a low man on the totem pole as far as uh, fire captains are concerned, he is going to get moved to a different shift and when that happens, he's going to have to change his number to that corresponding shift but because this panel is removable, I can go ahead and make another uh, one of these. Let's see, I might actually have a blank here. I do. So I already have a blank cut out and he already asked me to make another number plate that's gonna say 103 versus 107. And uh, that way um, I'll just uh, stitch down some uh, Velcro on the back there, so when the shift change does happen, if he does end up moving over there to the other shift, he can just remove that and put his new number on the front of the shield, and he doesn't have to get a new shield, so. All right, so we're gonna get started here with the uh, clear um, tracing film that I got from Tandy Leather, and the most important part of these fire shields is the center line. Uh, just draw on a line right down the center, of the tracing film and I used an old fire shield there to um, get my top and bottom lines set 
uh, that little notch there for the hook on the top of the uh, fire helmet. And then I got some old blanks here uh, from previous shields that I've made that I hang on to uh, just because um, they're the right, cor or correction, they're the correct size needed uh, for these projects um, for the little windows where the uh, uh, lettering is stamped. So I just uh, draw half of those on one side of that center line. And then I'm also going to draw a little window here for the uh, uh, Velcro uh, tab to be inserted. Uh, so the numbers can be removed um, when uh, this person changes shifts and has to change their shield number. And then I'm just going to freehand uh, the sides here to kind of get an idea of what I'm working with. And I'm going to erase and redraw the sides of this helmet several times. I'm not going to show every time I do that just because it becomes uh, redundant. but. Um, once I uh, have an idea of where I need to be, I fold the tracing film in half and then I flip it over and I begin uh, tracing the outline on the other side, the blank side, and then when I uh, fold this thing back out flat, uh, it's going to be the exact same on both sides. Moving on, now that uh, I have the, uh, the outline set on the tracing film, I'm going to cut out a small square off the white leather here, and I'm going to uh, cut it down with my Cobra Class 14 leather splitter, because I believe this leather is about 8 to 9 ounce, and I need to get it down to about 5 ounce, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that down. It's kind of like a planer is for our, uh, woodwork. Uh, this is the same thing. It cuts down the thickness of leather to the size that you need. Uh, this is vegetable tan leather so I'm going to be able to get it wet and then come back in here put the outline down on here and trace it out. Once I have the lines all down on the leather I'll pull that off and you can see the markings there and then I'll start cutting the little windows out. I'm just using a hobby knife or a pen knife, whatever you want to call it. You can get them at Hobby Lobby. Uh, you can get them at a uh, hardware store all over. And then um, I'm going to stamp a, a hole there for the hook. And then it makes it a lot easier to uh, cut that little channel out. I'm just using my uh, craft tool knife with a little hook uh, blade in it to cut this out. I do have a uh, round knife, but uh, I don't really care for it too much. I only use it for very specific things. But anyway, uh, here are the little uh, blanks that go in the windows. I'm going to hang on to those. As you'll see later, they come in very handy when it comes time to stitch this together. And now, due to this white leather absorbing things, I just completely hose this thing down with uh, Phoebing's acrylic resin to try to prevent it from picking up any stains or absorbing anything. And I'm going to come back in and uh, sand down the uh, the inside of the little windows here with uh, 220 and 400 grit sandpaper and then I wet sand it with the 400 and then rub it down with a burnishing stick and now I have uh, uh, I'm painting uh, with some Phoebing's uh, black edge paint on the inside of the windows here. I have a piece of uh, clear plastic down over the top of my granite stone here so I don't get paint on it. And there's the blank that will eventually have the shield numbers stitched to it. Now I'm going to put a uh, stitch line around that blank and then I'm going to stick uh, one side of the Velcro to the back side of this blank and then stitch it down in the sewing machine. I have the one side of the Velcro stuck to that leather blank there. And then I'll just trim off the uh, 
extra around the edge. <clears throat> now I'm using a Cobra Class 3 uh, harness stitcher from the Leather Machine Company out of Ontario, California. And I'm using number 207 nylon thread in black, which looks really nice. Uh, it contrasts really well against the white leather. Now I'm uh, getting the nameplate that goes behind the uh, leather, the white leather with the wool windows. And I'm just making that out of a piece of 8 to 9 ounce veg tan. I wetted it down and now I'm going to draw the outlines for all the little windows. The thing about these fire shields that are made out of leather is uh, when you get a couple of these pieces sandwiched together like this, it makes them very rugged. As you'll see uh, here in a minute, uh, correction, um, as I shown at the very beginning of this uh, video of how uh, well they hold up in an actual fire. Um, the ones that have used plastic for the name plates instead of stamping them into leather like I'm doing here will just melt right off the helmet every time. Now I'm just kind of lining up the uh, the lettering here and I'm using a cheap uh, Harbor Freight uh, one ton Arbor Press to press the letters in. And the letters are just a letter kit that I got from Tandy. Then the uh, white leather piece will go over the top here. And you can kind of get an idea how this is going to look. Now I'm coming back in. I have these uh, little bottles I got off of Amazon. I don't know the company off the top of my head that makes these, but they work really well for painting uh, lettering like this. This is uh, Angelus uh, acrylic uh, leather paint. And I'm just going to get the red outlines for the windows done, and then I'll set that off to dry. And while that's drying, I'm going to get my center line set up here on the uh, little uh, leather blank here that's going to hold the numbers. And like I said, with these fire shields, the center line is everything. Um, it's going to line up the uh, numbers, the letters, and the center of the shield. Along with, uh, it'll be centered up with the hook on the helmet, and it keeps everything in order. But I'm just coming in here and mocking up how I want to get these numbers to look on this blank. I'll get them drawn out here and then I'm going to cut them out of some 8 to 9 ounce uh, black English bridal leather that I have. Um, I have a, a scrap piece here that I'm going to cut this off of. But uh, as you can see I can lay the number uh, tracing film piece over the other one um, that I had made and I can see that it's all going to line up here with all the center lines that I've made up to this point. So there's the uh, piece of English bridle and I'm just going to come back in here. I'm going to press in the uh, numbers with the stylus and then I'll come back and cut them out. And then I'll sand the edges down again with some 220, some 400, burnish them and then I'll paint them with some black uh, Phoebe's edge paint. Double checking to make sure they're the right size. I'm trying to get an idea of how they're going to look. And then just throwing the edge paint on here. I'm going to come back that this is had a chance to dry and I'm gonna get the white lettering in. I'm also gonna outline all of these with uh, black um, paint which really makes them stand out. I guess I, I forgot to get some footage of that so I, po I apologize. But you'll 
there'll be a picture of it uh, finished up here with the black outlining around the letters and you'll be able to see it, uh, what that looks like. But I get all the letters painted in and the backgrounds painted in while these two main body pieces are apart. And then I've, let's see here, I have gone and uh, uh, stuck down that, uh, the other side of the Velcro and I went ahead and stitched that down in the sewing machine. I guess I didn't get any footage of that either. <laughs> but uh, now I'm back letting that dry and I'm going to get the numbers uh, stuck down here with some two-sided uh, stick tape and then I'm going to stitch that down with some uh, black uh, thread. I had to see here I have not had to refill the bobbin yet but just stitching them down enough where uh, both sides of the zero are stitched to the leather. You don't go all the way around because uh, there's no uh, back, uh, not enough backing on this plate to go and cover the back side of these entire numbers but uh, they will fit. Now what I'm doing here is getting the uh, the back side of the fire shield ready to go. Just cutting that out of another scrap piece of black English bridal leather. And I'm going to run that through the uh, splitter and cut that down, I believe, to about four ounce. And then ultimately, uh, after the windows have been stitched down, I'll put that on the backing and uh, that'll be the back side of this shield. Now I'm getting my uh, stitch lines uh, scribed in with a compass. And then I just started using this Wellwood uh, contact cement. I really like it. Um, other uh, leather crafters on YouTube uh, seem to really like it. I thought I'd give it a try, and I really like it. It's available at all the local hardware stores, and it's actually uh, cheaper than Barge. So I think I'm going to be sticking with uh, using uh, Wellwood for a little while and uh, see how well it works for uh, my projects. It worked really well for this project, so I was really pleased. So. There I am uh, getting the backing ready to go. I guess I yeah I went ahead and uh, stuck the backing on before I stitched around the windows, so I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm gonna get these uh, three main pieces of leather all stuck together. Let them dry. The stuff, this uh, adhesive is very strong, so I had to do all that out in the garage with the door up, even though it's freezing cold outside right now. So here are the blanks I discussed earlier and why I keep them. I'm going to stick those back in now that that paint's completely dry, and I'm going to stitch around them, and that way the foot of the machine is able to walk over that blank, and I'm able to maintain control of the foot of the machine as I'm going around because if I didn't have that then that foot would just try to drop down inside that window and I wouldn't get an even stitch so I'm going to go around each of these windows get them stitched down and then I'll cut the uh, extra around the shield off sand that down and then uh, stitch around the outline and Checking the bobbin, yep, I still got plenty of thread in it. It's a really large bobbin, so they take a while to run out. And I'm getting ahead of myself again. Yeah, I just I stitched that down before I took it out to the sander. I got the speed of this video sped up quite a bit. But uh, nah, these Cobra machines are so nice with the uh, servo no uh, the uh, servo motors, 
and uh, they slow way down and I can stitch at a snail's pace if need be so I make sure that uh, every time that needle comes down it's going down exactly where it needs to go so I'm just burning off the uh, ends of the, uh, the thread there and now I'm going to cut out the uh, outline The shield's quite thick, so it takes me several passes with the uh, craft tool knife in order to get through all the leather. Then I'm going to go ahead and punch a hole there on for the hook, and then cut that little channel out. So, it's starting to come together. We're almost finished. Heading out to the belt sander, making sure all the edges are even. Then I've just got a uh, craft tool, fine edge, edger. I like using these on the fire shields. I don't want it too round because uh, when the uh, I put the edge paint on, um, I want it to uh, just kind of roll a bead of paint around there. And I also want it to be nice and flat so when it gets put on the helmet, um, it sits you know nice and square on it. So I got a little cup of water here. I'm gonna wet down the edges. Must have already, I've already gone over it with uh, 220, and now I'm coming over it with 400 grit sandpaper, and then I'm just gonna rub it down with the side of a looks like a edge beveler. And then I like to go around uh, with uh, Phoebe's uh, black a leather dye. And then when that dries, I'm going to come back in with uh, Phoebe's black edge coat paint and paint up the edges. And once I get this coat of paint on, I can stick the numbers on and this shield is finished. I did not come up with the idea as far as having the uh, Velcro uh, numbers that stick on there. Um, that was shown to me out, out of a catalog but it's really cool anyway thanks for watching this is Andrew in Omaha Nebraska have a nice day